Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC20 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. For the last two episodes, we featured this really cool team with Sneasel and Grimmsnarl, so I'm going to be playing it for one more episode, and then we're probably going to be switching to something brand new in tomorrow's episode, but thank you guys as always for watching Road to Rank, and if you are interested in this team, it is a rental team created by a player called Evan Smoke, team report linked in the description below as well as Evan's Twitter. As always, if you guys enjoy Road to Rank, please share your support by leaving a like in the video, I'd really appreciate it. We are up against one heck of a team for the first game today. There is a Malamar, a Diggersby, and an Obstagoon. And then you've got very standard, like, Sun stuff with Whimsicott, Charizard, and Ninetales. So we have to worry about the charm from Whimsicott into the uh, Malamar, just to get it going immediately. Um, hmm. Against Sun? I mean, we have Sneasel, Darmanitan, right? So, like, if my opponent leads Charizard and Ninetales, I can Icy Wind Rock Slide. That'd actually be a pretty sick play. The thing is, I'm not super comfortable leading Grimmsnarl into this stuff, um, mainly because Sun just still kind of wrecks it. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Sneasel is that we can also fake out uh, the Whimsicott, so I think I'm going to go Sneasel Darmanitan, actually. Excuse me. And um, go with... Grim's a little tempting here. I think Fairy is good. I still want to bring Grimmsnarl, and it's our last day with this team, so I'm going to try to bring it as much as possible. We could still potentially max it. It's very lead-dependent, I would say, but yeah. Uh, we're going to jump into the first game today. Question of the day, if you guys have not seen yet, uh, the Series 4 rules came out, and more gigantic max Pokemon like Gengar and Machamp are going to be allowed, so uh, if you haven't seen those, the rules are linked in the description below. I'm curious what excites you most about Series 4. Uh, let me know in the comments below. It is Charizard Ninetales, so if it's not Scarf Ninetales, we just Icy Wind Rock Slide Turn 1. Now, the scary thing is that Icy Wind and Rock Slide can miss. But if they don't miss, it's just going to be a double KO. That being said, we need a bunch of things right now. We need it to not be Scarf Ninetales, which it totally could be. Uh, the alternative, what's safer is probably to, like, Fake Out Ninetales, Dynamax, Darmanitan, and then Max Rock. But I really want to go for this, so I'm going to go for it. <laughs> okay, Charizard's maxing. That's fine. If you're not Scarf Ninetales, this is a double KO. Now that being said, Scarf Ninetales isn't like absurd to think of. Some people run it where you run like Hypnosis or Fake Tears so that you support the Charizard, but a lot of people run Sash Respects as well. My heart is pounding right now because if this works out, this is going to be the hypest turn one play ever. Nice, okay, there we go. So Icy Wind connects, their speed drops immediately. Alright, we just need to hit these rock slides right now, Darm. Hit the Charizard, that's all, all I asked for, honestly. Oh! <laughs> Chef's kiss. That is the setup we were going for, ladies and gentlemen, and we got it. Oh, that was so sick. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I figured my opponent would want to lead Sun. I also thought maybe Whimsicott was a possibility, but this option covered both of those. Once again, the only problem is if it is Scarf on the uh, Ninetales, but it's not that common, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> that felt so good, man. I'm gonna Icy Wind again, and, um... Yeah, I mean, I think Prim Grimstar will clean this up, right? So, I'll just Icy Wind and Blitz into Diggersby. Once again, this, there were a bunch of things that were scary about that. Okay, Diggersby's actually gonna... Is, oh, it's Scarfed with Body Slam. Okay. But we survived that. Nice. Um, I was gonna say, no Dynamax. That's curious, but yeah, Charizard Max turn one. <laughs> Uh, if I actually targeted Obstagoon, uh, it would have been a perfect game. But I, I should have anticipated Scarf too. Scarf Body Slam is interesting. I'm surprised uh, for no Rock Slide. I didn't give Obstagoon a Defiant Boost, but whatever. <laughs> it just ensures that I outspeed everything now. Um, but yeah, like Icy Wind Superpower would have gotten us a 4 -oh. But it's pretty much impossible to lose this game with Prim and Grimmsnarl on the back as two Fairy types. And now Obstagoon's at minus one speed. Steve actually dodges cross chop too. But now we can just bring out the Grim Snarl. So I, I got everything I wanted this game. I featured Sneasel, I got the Icy Wind Rock Slide combo off, and I got the Grim Snarl stuff off. So not bad. We'll take it. We'll take it. It's AV Obstagoon too. Yeah, so this thing is getting dumped on right now by Grim Snarl. Um I'm just gonna go for Screech Max and Starfall. There's I don't think Obstagoon survives the Dynamax Starfall here. 
Yeah, I mean, Icy Wind was a little, little too much, maybe, given that my opponent, like, Obstagoon's run to find, but I, I just really wanted to. Plus, I actually think in that position, um, just guaranteeing I outspeed if it was, like, Choice Scarf Obstagoon was helpful as well, although this Scarf actually ended up being on bigger speed. Uh, b body uh, Slam was surprising there instead of something like Rock Slide, but I guess maybe my opponent didn't want to miss and they knew they weren't going to get KOs anyway. Although I think if you're ever down one in a situation like that and you have Scarf Rock Slide, you just go for it because you can flinch. Whereas Body Slam there would need a crit or a paralysis to have a chance. We even connect with the uh, Screech, which is nice. So, plus four Obstagoon, but not going to be able to really do any damage here. So we get the Star Fall off and destroy it. Nice. Oh, uh, that was beautiful though. The Icy Wind dynamic speed stuff there. Uh, shows you how you can make some cool plays with Icy Wind um, or Max Airstream, for example, or Tailwind, where, like, Tailwind is more predictable, right? Icy Wind kind of comes out of nowhere, so that's a play that, like, I think it's kind of hard to predict, especially when you're staring down, like, Sneasel and uh, Darmanitan. Like, what the heck? If I were to go up against I didn't know about this team, honestly, I would know, I have no idea what was coming my way. I would probably first expect Choice Scarf Darm. Although, I guess that's kind of surprising. I, I feel like you should actually expect Choice Scarf Darm. Um, so, it was AV. I'm curious on the item on the uh, Heavy Duty Boots Whimsicott. What? Scarf Diggers B. Without Rock Slide. Interesting. Sash Ninetales with Quick Attack, Extra Sensory. Huh. And then Life Orb, Charizard. Very offensive team. There's like no protects. Interesting. There also wasn't a charm there on the um, Whimsicott, which kind of caught me off guard. But yeah, I feel like actually if you stare down Darmanitan, you normally expect it to be Choice Scarf. So I'm actually kind of surprised my opponent just didn't switch out anyway. But I think Icy Wind Rock Slide is always the play to go for. And we got one of those like highlight real plays. So we'll take it. All right, going to get into our next game of the day, and we are up against pretty scary stuff. Um, Whimsicott, Dracozo, Chandelure, Primarina, Ferrothorn, and Milotic. Okay. So Whim is always scary, but as we saw in the last game, we can go with the Sneasel approach. I mean, Grimstone doesn't look half bad here, right? Of course, we have to be careful of the um, Primarina, but I honestly kind of just want to go Sneasel, Grimstone. Um... I think our Manitan's actually decently solid here for Ferrothorn. Although Togekiss does have Heat Wave and Babiri Berry, it's a little bit more consistent. Actually, Togekiss might be better. Like, what, what we could go with is Togekiss and Excadrill on the back, although that does make us kind of Chandelure weak. But with AB Grimstar, I don't think that should be much of a problem. So, Togekiss and Excadrill. This makes Primarina slightly scary. But it's not like my Primarina has a hyper, or sorry, yeah, like energy ball anyway. Why? What would I be bringing, bringing extra drill for? I think Dracozol, and I think Dracozol is enough of a threat where I can justify bringing it. So, all right, let's see how things go. Uh, also, <laughs> still just super, super hype. But here, I think the uh, we could just go for our icy wind turn one. If my opponent doesn't leave Whimsicott, they do leave Whimsicott. We can snipe the Whimsicott off with like a fake out and a max starfall to deny tailwind. We just got Drake as well. Okay. Huh. So, the fake up play I was mentioning is free here onto Whimsicott, but I mean, I could just attack, honestly, with Grimmsnarl into. We're gonna frisk. Eject button and policy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Huh. Eject button and policy. So, I, I mean, one thing you could do is self ferry yourself, right? Um, if I fake out, Whimsicott doesn't matter because it's going to get booted out anyway. But otherwise, you could just Tailwind. I, do, do I think it's going to switch out? I also have to worry about the trick. Oh, you can't trick onto us actually right now. I kind of want to go for the Screech play. Although, given that it's policy, it's probably bulky, but the thing is, I... Okay, he's not maxing. Does he protect Tailwinding? Oh, that would be bad, actually. I guess I, I, I'm so not used to Dracozilch just protecting right now anymore. I mean, you could double protect, which I guess would also be pretty bad for us here. Or Dracozilch's slow and we're faster than it? That could be it. No, that's, the, that's actually the reality. Okay. Huh. Well, what you could do, right, is go for a Tailwind, Max Warmwind. I, I was reading until the Protect with the switch out, because we did have uh, fake out pressure with both. 
Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Because if this, if like, Wimsicott just. Oh, well, actually, I mean, this could still happen. If Wimsicott protects here, I think the game's just over if we hit the Screech. Oh, I think the game's still over. <laughs> Screech connects. We're faster with Grimmsnarl. Oh my goodness. Nice. Ha <laughs> ha! I uh, hoping hands actually a really clever play there because it normally gets around the fake out But I figured in that position that whimsical was either gonna switch out or protect So I was like, okay, maybe we could just KO drink is up here And it actually happened so we'll take that not bad All right, let's see what comes out either way I think it's gonna be very difficult for my opponent to win this especially with ferro because I have fire type attacks in the back uh, ferro is a pretty tricky Pokemon to go up against otherwise, but um <laughs> what I could do is actually Ice Shard here into Whimsicott to boot it out. But I don't want it to Tailwind and just get something to come in for free. So instead, I think I'm actually going to go for the Screech onto the Ferrothorn and the G-Max Fuse onto that slot. Mainly because, like, Whimsicott doesn't really pressure me right now. I don't care if you Tailwind. If I target your slot, that actually gives you a free switch in. This effectively burns a turn of Tailwind. Um, and you don't get something in for free. So we've been fortunate to connect two for two on Screeches. But not bad. Okay, I don't think this KOs, but I mean, because so, Ferrothorns are almost like max HP defense. Yeah, it survives with like 25. That is, it's impressive to see a Pokemon survive with that much bulk. You know, just for body press. I think this probably still one shots us, despite being. Oh, never mind. Sneasel's actually pretty dang clutch. I'm gonna lie. I, I can't lie. Uh, we got the Snooze off. Oh, which is interesting, because we actually could um, change the terrain now into Grassy Terrain, couldn't we? And then Ferrothorn falls asleep. Huh. Kinda wanna Ice Shard the Whimsicott though. And if you look at my opponent's team, they don't have a switch in. Uh, they could have Prim in the back. It's it's either Prim or Chandelier. But if it's Chandelier, I have Sucker Punch. So I think Ice Sharding and Max Overgrowthing is actually kind of a big brain play here. Because it changes terrain so that Ferrothorn falls asleep. Oh, Ferrothorn actually switches out. Ooh, okay. Ah, uh, that ended up almost being so sick. That almost ended up being so, so sick. Because I would have switched out the Whimsicott, Ferrothorn would have fallen asleep, and I would have one-shot Milo. Or not, probably one-shot, but do a ton of damage. Ah, uh, but my opponent was bigger brain. I wonder if they expected me to change the terrain, because, I mean, Misty terrain was up, so Ferrothorn doesn't fall asleep there unless I change the terrain, but perhaps they were anticipating that, which, if so, kudos to them. <laughs> Max Overgrowth is probably going to do, like, 5%. <laughs> That is the most pitiful damage I think I've ever seen from a Dynamax attack. That was so sad. <laughs> that was very sad. But this is fine. Uh, what we can do now is just stall out the Tailwind. I'm going to switch the Grimmsnarl out to not get burnt. This Ferrothorn is still kind of a problem, right? Because it's just healing back from Leftovers and now Grassy Terrain. But it shouldn't be much of a problem because we do have Togekiss in the back. So all we need is a free switch into it. Um, we outspeed this Grimmsnarl anyway, or sorry, Ferrothorn anyway. There's two turns of Tailwind left. I don't want to Icy win for Defiant. And Togekiss, all, all Togekiss needs to do is come back, I mean, in and then Heat Wave. And then Grimmsnarl has Power Whip. So what I want to do here is just go for a, I guess, a Screech onto the Ferrothorn. Uh, I don't have like a super guaranteed play here. Like I don't want to icy win. Screech would lower its defenses. I guess screeching into Ferrothorn here is fine. Yeah, and I'm gonna swap Grimmsnarl out into Exodrill because I think Togekiss Grimmsnarl should win this game for me. Um, once Tailwind expires, I just Heat Wave, Power Whip, and just pick up a double KO from that. It was literally the most pitiful damage I think I've ever seen from a Dynamax Pokemon. <laughs> uh, Muddy Water is actually gonna activate weakness policy here. Ferrothorn didn't go for a Power Whip. And we actually survive here too. That's nice. With a uh, Sneasel, I meant. So, worst case scenario is the Pharaoh, I guess, Leech Seeding Excadrill. Um, we get the Screech off. It doesn't really matter at this point because the end game I'm setting myself up for is Togekiss and Grimstar anyway. So, Body Press is going to come out. Okay, so we don't even get Seeded, so now we can just protect Excadrill, bring out the Grimmsnarl. Um. I, okay, so the, the thing I was thinking was like I could I don't have protect on Togekiss or Grimmsnarl, right? 
But I have plus two high horsepower, which should KO Ferrothorn from this range at this point, I think. So I could bring out Grimstar pretty easily and fake out high horsepower. The problem with that is if I miss high horsepower. Alternatively, I could actually, why not just bring out Togekiss, Heat Wave, Protect? That seems fine, right? Unless you Ice Beam Freeze me, which I guess the odds of that are technically higher. But I know Toga like Ferrothorn shouldn't be outspeeding me even under Tailwind, so Heat Wave and Protect is fine. And the thing is, because our weakness policy got activated, now we have an endgame where we can win with Extra Girl and Grim Snarl as well, where we don't necessarily need Heat Wave from Togekiss. Okay. Good Protect by Ferrothorn though. My opponent's playing this as well as they can, honestly. But they offer Muddy Water, which is fine, so I guess you need to Accuracy Drop right now. Let's see. Okay, we don't take that much damage. <laughs> Do we need up an accuracy drop though? Okay, okay. Although, if I'm seeing Muddy Water, that probably means you don't have Scald. So, which means you can't burn the Grim Snarl. And AV Grim wins against the Milotic pretty easily. High Horsepower might still just KO Ferrothorn at this point, although it should be max HP defense Ferrothorn based off how well it took the... This is actually scary. If Oh, we have Babiri Berry, so we have some more insurance. So, Tailwind's over now, and I think I just go for the Heat Wave. And the... Oh, I could help me hand High Horsepower, actually. I actually like that more, because... Um... You could go for a Double Protect with Ferrothorn. Helping me hand High Horsepower into Milo actually seems like my best play. I don't think you ever body press Excadrill. Yeah, I'm actually going to go for that. Might seem a little bizarre, but I think it makes... Uh, okay, switches out. I'm not going to lie, I actually forgot my opponent had a Pokemon to switch out into. <laughs> but if Milo doesn't protect here, we win. Let's see. Oh... <sighs> <laughs> well, that's Pokemon for you guys. That is Pokemon for you. I, I did have to hit. I didn't have guarantee, a guaranteed win con because my moves that I needed to hit were High Horsepower, Heat Wave, and Power Whip, and none of those are 100% accurate, but uh, I mean... <laughs> that game was over if I connect that because I have Heat Wave, so all I have to do is switch Togekiss out and back in. Now, unfortunately... Mm, there is still a chance we win this, actually. But you also got the Accuracy Drop again. Grassy Terrain. Like, Power Whip maybe KOs the Milo here. <sighs> that is super tilting. Um... Yeah, I... I think I just Air Slash and Power Whip here. I mean, I do have Fake Out, right? So I could Fake Out Air Slash Whimsicott, but I have to hit it. That might be actually my best play, though. If I hit it and KO, then you don't get Tailwind up again. And Fake Out itself should be, like, a fair amount. I actually took it better than I expected. Okay, we actually hit the Air Slash. I don't know if it's enough to KO here, though. Okay, it is. Alright, we're still in this, then. <laughs> He's Coil. Probably Coil Hypnosis, then. Okay. The Coil makes this very difficult because of all these drops, too. Because now Power Up is just not doing enough damage to my Lodic. Uh, it feels so bad to miss a plus two attack helping hand. I mean, that was definitely KO in the my Lodic, even if it was max HP defense, I think. So, that's unfortunate. I think now... Now is actually interesting because you know I have Heat Wave, right? So, I actually think you probably go for a Hypnosis onto Togekiss. So, I think I can read into that and I have a chance here if I flinch. So I'm going to uh, try to go for the flinch and power wood. See if I can connect my attacks right now. Yep, there's the protect. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh my goodness, what is happening? <laughs> All right, now the, I need a heat wave here. I, will, I can't believe it. I mean, at least the Hypnosis missed, right? Um, yeah, I still need to hit- If I hit the Heat Wave on Ferrothorn, then even if Hypnosis hits here, we have a chance. And Heat Wave actually somehow connects. What is this game right now? 
A bird would be clutch too. That's fine if we don't. Come on! Just let me hit you once! Oh my god, what the heck? Oh, we've missed four attacks on this thing already, and he's got to do my heavy water accuracy drops on us. <laughs> okay, I'm still going for the flinches here, though. I don't think it's worth following me. Follow me. This is actually unbelievable. I mean... <sighs> okay. I mean, now you hypnosis for sure. Target's grim. The reason I didn't want to follow me there, man, follow me might have been worth it. Ah, oh. now the question is, do you just go for muddy water? Because we're assault vested. The other question is, do you have recover? We've seen coil hypnosis muddy water, so it's probably recover as the last one. We actually hit an air slash there. Okay, let's see if we can flinch. That's good damage too. It's buried. Okay, citrus berry. Grimstar takes his first turn to sleep. And we get a flinch. This has been one of the weirdest games I've played in a while, I think. Alright. But the odds actually aren't too bad for us right now. And we actually managed to connect on another air slash. Thank you, Togekiss. You're finally doing what you need to. We stay asleep. Now the question is, do you have recover and do you go for it? Ah, <laughs> uh, so now, it, basically the way we win this is we need to flinch it on a turn it's clicking recover. If we, if we actually flinch this turn and we wake up, we win. I mean, if we woke up last turn, we also would've won. But once again, we still need to connect with all these attacks. This is just... Pokemon at its finest. Okay, we miss. We'll probably recover now. And we stay asleep. Okay. He's actually opting for muddy water, though. Okay, shouldn't do much to Grim. That's not very much at all, no. I was really waiting for the accuracy drop there. I could now go for Follow Me or Helping Hand Power Whip, but you should always go for Hypnosis on a Grim Snarl. And unfortunately, two Power Whips does not KO that Milotic. But if I flinch here, I outright win. So I'm going for it. I, I shouldn't say outright, because I still need a hit. But we managed to hit, okay. I bet we're not going to flinch now, and we're going to miss Power Whip. That's my read on this turn. That might just be an air slash KO range. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Get me out of this game! Uh, I mean, my opponent's playing it correctly. So now if we just hit two, I mean, air slash, it might just KO. But we're at minus two accuracy. Holy cow. And the problem is... <laughs> Oh my goodness. I can't, I actually can't believe this game. We're gonna get, we're actually gonna run out of PP. That's how we're gonna lose this. Fortunately, Power Whip is PP maxed. This is actually unreal right now. And another, okay. Does Muddy Water though, okay, that's fine. Although I think another one KOs to Togekiss. It's a roll. <sighs> I think this actually might be my least favorite game of Pokemon I've played this year. I mean, we're probably going to end up losing at this point now, especially if we get a three-turn sleep. Oh my goodness. That's... <laughs> well, I'm glad at least I get to capture this for YouTube, because it is single-handedly, I think, the most ridiculous game I've played in this format. In terms of RNG, it's actually really up there. Um... But I could have managed my position better a little bit as well. We actually hit the air slash, okay, okay. 60% chance to flinch. Come on, Grimmsnarl, wake up. And it recovers. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this game. We got two three turn sleeps. No, and the thing is, even if we just, if we just flinch there, it's and we're gonna miss air slash. Oh my goodness! We can still crit power with though. Or you can't miss muddy water at this point. <laughs> or low roll on kiss. Wow, I actually cannot believe that just happened. Uh that's one for the books, guys. 
Okay, we still win this crazily enough off a of power whip crit. And seeing all the... I mean, we're probably going to miss. I'm just feeling it. But... Power whip connects. Oh my goodness. Unless he muddy watered here. You click recover, actually. The play is actually always the hypnosis there. By recovering, you open yourself up for more crits. I actually maybe could have played this endgame better. I mean, I had a helping hand, but I didn't want to risk that. I could have followed Mead. Oh, I'm going to miss Power Whip, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So games like this, it's always good to look back and be like, okay, what could I have done better? I actually forgot timer was a thing too, but now we just lose. Uh, single target Muddy Water might not- we can still win. If you- if we survive Muddy Water, we wake up and we crit a power win. That's crazy though, that's actually crazy. If we flinch on any of the times that he's trying to- okay. <laughs> I was expecting another accuracy drop. Right now, we need a crit to win this. We need to wake up and crit. I think we win this game almost every time though, so I don't really feel that bad about how I played this. I was- why are you coiling? Just muddy water, dude. You're giving me more shots to win. I, I don't get that decision. This is, this is truly a game of Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words on this one. I, of course, he's gonna coil again. I, I just see it. What is he doing? Are you taunting me? Uh, the disrespect, man. There's there's literally no reason to not click Muddy Water. <laughs> I'm actually super tilted because this guy clicked Coil instead of just Muddy Watering. Like, he opened himself up to the chance of a Power Whip crit. Ah, uh, I think I'm done for Pokemon for the day. I was going to make a third episode, but I, I, I can't play much after that. That was actually ridiculous. <laughs> okay, let's look back and think about what I could have done better, though, because the things about games like these... Okay, first of all, when I play a game like this, I'm like, I first of all, if we just hit the high horsepower, that Milo's gone instantly. But this, in, in this game, like... It was like one of those like 0.0001% games where, I mean, my opponent hit every Muddy Water. Granted, they coiled, right? So once you coil, your odds of hitting Muddy Water are higher, but we missed like everything. I mean, they, they did miss the Hypnosis onto us as well. <sighs> but I even made the read of the Ferrothorn Protecting, Air Slash Power Whip, and it still didn't go my way. And at that time, our accuracy was only minus one as well. Um... <laughs> I can't believe he BM'd by just going for- There's no reason to coil there in the end. You always click Muddy Water because it's 100% accurate. So, yeah. It would have been so fitting for Power Whip to, like, to have wake woken up. And that was, what, three three turn sleeps from Hypnosis? That's nutty. Like I said, I could have followed Mead with Togekiss, but the reason I didn't want to is because Togekiss, if I connect on a single Air Slash, has a chance to flinch, and it's a very good chance of flinching as well. Um, and I actually did forget about the fact my opponent had Whimsicott in the back, but I, I really, honestly, I'm not sure where I would have played too differently. <sighs> Maybe Screeching the Milo, but once again, I didn't want to Screech to give it a uh, competitive boost. Um, yeah. I don't know, I gotta rewatch that one and see what I could have actually done better. Maybe I'll include it in the comments below, but that's a game that we win 99.999% of the time. Especially after that turn one. That is not a game we should ever lose after turn one. Um, but my opponent did make the proactive play of, uh, switching out the Ferrothorn, and once again, I, I was really shocked by that, because I was like, Misty Terrain's up, oh, I'm surprised by that switch. Um, but ended up really saving them, because I did have the Ice Shard as well, and it almost ended up being a super sick play, but today's episode was both the best game of Pokemon and the worst game of Pokemon combined, and that, I think, shows you the highs and lows of this game, but, you know, my opponent did everything they needed to to win that game, so, uh, at the end of the day, like, you can't be mad about that, and I, like, games like these... When I, I, like, every now and then, of course, I'll be in my opponent's position. I'll be like, wow, like, I totally shouldn't have won that, but we take those. And, I mean, in that one, <laughs> that was just insane. <laughs> it was just crazy, because I, after the high horsepower miss, I was like, wait, how do we win this? And I was like, wait, we can still win this. And then we didn't win it. Um, but I, I'm sure there were some better plays we could have made. I need to go back and watch the game, because I'm so frazzled out right now. But that's going to be it for this episode, guys. So, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, peace.